Hi everyone, so we're back. I wanted to do another demo on making a Kirinoki um, lidded form. I think in the book they call it, uh, Melissa calls it a, uh, a treasure box. Um, it's very similar to the same process where you're taking a solid piece of clay and you're going to be hollowing it out with a couple added things. We're going to get into slipping and scoring and that's how in ceramics we bond two things together. Um, and we'll also be getting into sort of using the wire tool to kind of cut the top from the bottom so we have like, you know, uh, a top portion and a bottom portion. So I've sort of roughed out my little shape. And so what I was thinking about making, um, I think it'll be important for all of you before you actually like jump into the making process, is to maybe think about something, how you can use this. So for me, I think I'm going to make um, a salt cellar. And so instead of having a salt in like a salt shaker, we have in my house um, like this raw kosher salt. And so I was thinking about maybe having a small container that I could keep covered when I'm not using it, but uncovered and I can grab in, you know, a handful of salt if I need. So I've made mine, um, and you can make whatever you want. Um, if you want to make a large jewelry box, you want to make something for to contain some other form, you can scale up or scale down. So for me, this is about like kind of like the size of like a hockey puck. Um, and so I've sort of worked this guy into a pretty round form. Your form doesn't have to be round. It can be geometric and rectangular. It doesn't really matter. And I actually let this clay stiffen up a little bit. So it's a little bit stiffer than my previous cup. And so what I'm first going to do is take my wire tool. If you want to, you can carve the outside. I'm actually going to wait a little bit later until this clay is a little bit stiffer so I can carve it away a little bit easier. But I'm going to take my wire tool. And I'm, what I'm going to do is very carefully sort of basically try and cut this guy in half. So I'm going to sort of wrap this around, trying to be as even as possible. Um, and I'm going to sort of slowly pull this wire tool, trying to keep it as straight as I can. So I kind of pulled one side, and I'll come around here and pull the rest of this. All right, so then we can just separate this. Top, bottom, right? So then we have to kind of, very similar to our last cup, I'm going to sort of go ahead and give myself some outlines of where my clay wall is gonna be. So I'm gonna be sort of hollowing out and carving out all this material. Then I can get into sort of using my loop tools. I think I might start off with this smaller one. And sort of just kind of come around and slowly carve away. And I think for me, I find it helpful to try and do like a smooth outside cut just to kind of get things going. And then I'll sort of go in and sort of hog out all this interior stuff. Be careful that you're not going too deep through the actual lid or the bottom. You do want your wall to be equally as thick on the bottom too. So this is about a quarter inch here. You're gonna want the floor to be about a quarter of an inch too. So for my form, I don't really need to go that deep. If you do, you can just take some clay and literally patch it and smush it back together. Um, all these little pieces that you are using, save and put them back into your bag because you'll be able to reuse them. If you let them dry out on the table, they're gonna get all crusty and you won't be able to use them again. So now that I removed all this, I can kind of get in here and take this all away. Again, I'm not worried about trying to make things perfect right now. I can do that once the clay starts to stiffen up. I think that's actually going to be deep enough. Try and get a sense of the depth by feeling. So I'm going to set this one aside and we'll come back to this one and I'll do the same thing. So I'm also trying to do this like very quick through these demos. I don't want them to be longer than 15 minutes. So just understand like take your time. If the clay's too wet, 
let it dry out a little bit. If it's too hard, well, then that's kind of it at that point. So then I can kind of scoop all this away. I am also working at a very small scale to try and speed things up for the demo. But if you want to work larger, go ahead, scale things up. getting all this removed. So now, I can kind of take this guy and with my fingers, I can kind of get in there and start smoothing this away. So when this clay is just a little bit stiffer, and this is a little bit stiffer than my cup that I did earlier, it's just a lot easier to work with. So if you're like kind of fighting with the clay, it's probably a good indication that you need to either let the clay stiffen up. So I have like this little burr on this edge. I can simply, you know, take a little carving tool and take that down. Really intuitive and straightforward in terms of like, you know, technique this isn't like difficult things so then i can kind of go ahead and sort of soften these edges by pinching them so i have one portion and i'm going to kind of clean this one up and do the same thing i didn't do a great job at hollowing this area out so i'm going to go ahead and kind of and so i'm doing it a little bit different than the book but the idea and the principle is the same, and we're going to get into sort of slipping and scoring what's called um, uh, the flange. And the flange is what's going to sort of lock everything together. I wanted to kind of create, since my piece is so not tall, <laughs> I wanted to sort of create a little bit more volume on the inside, so I carved away some space on the lid and the actual base. I think your book does it a little bit different, but the principle and the idea is the same, that we're gonna to need to attach some clay to kind of allow things to lock in and stay connected so the lid stays on the, the base of the pot. So I can do that. I'm gonna sort of take away that burr. And then I'll kind of get in there really gently and smooth everything down. Your book also is using uh, wooden ribs and metal ribs, which are these guys for smoothing. This one is really great, but it's a little too tight for this area. So my fingers and hands literally will be the best tool for a lot of things, but um, sometimes you need to use another tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of pinch down and smooth and refine these edges and I can go back at this and do more too. So then you're seeing the idea of these two sort of sitting together, right? But nothing's really locking them in together, right? So I think for this one, I'm going to put the flange on the actual bottom. So this scrap clay that I just kind of carved out and kind of roll in my hands and work together, it's still really soft and um, a good usable consistency. Set this aside. Kind of roll them out on the table. So for rolling coils, it's not as easy as it looks, but a couple tips. Keep your fingers and hands rigid. Roll from the tips of your fingers to the beginning of the wrist, making sure you get full rotations. If you go like this, the coil's not making full rotations and it ends up kind of getting like smushed and flat. Since my pot is pretty small, I don't need um, a ton of clay. So I'm going to roll this out to be a little thinner. I can set this aside and use it for something else later. But, okay, in clay, when we're sticking things together. Unfortunately, I can't really take two pieces of clay and stick them together. They're going to stick for a temporary uh, amount of time, but as things dry, 
and shrink, they're just going to pop right off. So we need to sort of score the surfaces and rough things up so when we put them together, they're going to kind of like mesh and bond together and then they won't be able to sort of wiggle free. So um, Melissa uses a serrated rib. They don't come in the toolkits that you all are probably going to be purchasing, but a fork is going to work really well. Um, I was looking for some plastic forks. I didn't have one. A metal fork is just fine. You can wash everything off. It's totally safe and fine. But what I'm going to be doing is attaching this coil on the inside here, and this is going to be protruding up. So this will sit into here. Um, the book does a really good job showing and illustrating how to go about doing that. So what I'm going to do is actually going to get in here. And I can actually use the needle tool tool. The fork's a little large, but I'm going to rough up and score this area. So I'm just making lots and lots of incisions on the surface. I don't want to go all the way through the clay, but I do want my incisions to be somewhat rough. And then I'll go back and come around and go the other way. So they're like this crisscrossing. We often use slip to bond things with one another. Um, I'll talk more about slipping and scoring, but for like the first week's projects, what I'm going to do is just use a, a little bit of water. I have some water in my cup here. And I'm going to just run it on the inside where I've scored that area. If I need to, I can go back and rough it up more. And as I'm roughing up that area where I've applied that water, I'm creating slip. And slip, all that slip is, is basically clay that has a lot of water on it. So it's just a little bit of a much smoother, softer consistency. So that guy's a little short. I'm sure some of you have done a lot of like coil building in the past. Um, maybe you took a class in at another school, in grade school, in high school. And we're going to get into some coil pots too later. So now I'm going to take this guy and gently pinch it downward onto the area that I scored. And this is going to be the flange. And this will be what locks it in. And I just, that was pretty darn good. I had enough. If you were, came up short, you can just take more clay and add it on. So now what I'm going to do is spend some time fussing and compressing this and making sure that it's thoroughly compressed onto my actual base. Your wooden knife is going to be a good tool to kind of get into these seams, kind of smooth things. And kind of use this guy to smush this clay. It's kind of hard to see. What I'm doing is using the back of this wooden knife to kind of smush that clay downward and compress it really thoroughly. Now I'm going to pinch this clay and kind of make it a little bit narrower and make this a little taller. I'm just trying to make this edge here pretty crisp and clean so it wants to drop right in or the lid wants to drop around it, however you want it. So you can have this to be the base and the lid will go on top or it can be vice versa. I think for me, I'm going to have this be the base. I think Melissa does it the exact opposite way for her form. And that's totally fine. I think it depends. But in my mind, I want to have more volume in here. So this is going to give me a little bit more height so I can have a little bit of more salt in there. So I'm just cleaning things up using the inside. So now, time to kind of see how things are going to fit, right? So it's a little, it's a little too wide. So what I can do is A, I could take away more clay on the outside here. And I'll show you that real quick. I'm going to sort of make this a little wider so it can fit around that flange that I've made. And you're going to have to do some tweaking to kind of adjust it here and there. So that's a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and take away some more. OK. 
careful that you don't make the walls too thin either. You can get them pretty thin, but just realize like the thinner they are, the more likely you're going to break it while you're making. And if they're too thin, they're not going to last that long. They're going to get chipped up. All right, so let's see. So that's looking pretty good. A little big on the back. You get the idea. Now, let me just tweak this a little bit more. Let's see if we can get it to fit a little bit better. Often, too, when people are making these types of forms, right, you have your top and your bottom, they'll give you some sort of direction. So you can, on how things are going to line up, because these aren't perfectly round. Like, it might only fit a certain way. So one thing that I'm going to do to kind of give myself some registration, so it's all pretty, pretty neat and uniform, I can add pieces. I'm going to keep it really basic here. I'm going to score this area. And I'll score this area. I'll use a little bit of water and kind of rough this up again. Take two little balls of clay. Kind of work them on there. And you can be really decorative with this too, but this will be a sort of an indication on where things are gonna line up, right? You can carve into them, you can do anything you want, you can decorate the surfaces, um, but this is just the basic idea of your lidded Kirinoki form. Um, all right, I hope that was helpful. Experiment, try some new things out. The book is really good. It has a lot of um, really clear images that'll help through the technical process. But remember, like this is like art. You can do whatever you want. Um, the whole idea is just to use this technique to create a lidded form. Um, so explore, experiment, and have some fun. And we'll get to some other things in another video.